gene therapy or stem cell therapy. Everybody's very excited about those modalities to try to actually cure somebody that has poor vision. We talked about some of the barriers to doing this, and it actually gene therapy is being used in the eye for other diseases. Some uh, biotechnical companies, Dr. Tim Stout, up at the University of Oregon. The University of Pennsylvania's School of Medicine with the Dr. Albert McGuire and his wife, Dr. Jean Bennett, for a small orphan disease called Labor's Congenital Amaurosis. And so there, we know that there's a, a way that we can get genes incorporated into an eye that has an abnormal gene. The issue with Coates disease is that we don't know the gene abnormality to fix. And uh, we catch these kids usually later. If we could catch them earlier and we knew the gene, it would be something that gene therapy could definitely help. When can you one day grow retinas in a dish and then in, and put them in the eye? The issue of transplanting, so if you took some skin off of you and put it on me, uh, that's a possibility. But there are issues with my immune system reacting to your skin and, and rejecting it. And so that's, that's the kind of thing that has been an issue for transplantation for some parts of the body. Other parts of the body are so highly integrated that you can't simply transplant like a part of the brain where it's wired to every other part of the body. Well, that's how the eye and the retina are. The retina is like an interface, a photographic film that is then connected via an optic nerve to the brain. And in the case of a problem with the center of the retina, one of the main causes in Coates disease for vision loss, this wiring gets messed up all the way back to the back of the brain. So if we try to put a transplant in there of just normal retina, it doesn't integrate and make the millions of connections it needs to to be able to provide vision to us. There's a hope that one day stem cell research would be able to cause that integration. But I don't think we're close to that. Even though one might read in the newspaper, which uh, happened about a month ago, uh, information about stem cell technology being used in the eye. That was for a supporting layer underneath the retina that doesn't have to integrate as much. And that was shown to be, at least on the very, very initial phases by a Dr. Steven Schwartz at UCLA, uh, a plausible first step towards doing sort of stem cell research in humans on the eye. That is what we're watching. I'm talking to a lot of times people who have children who are 2, 10, 15 years old. Well, if you think about 50 years ago, where we were, 60, 70 years ago, when we didn't have penicillin, and now uh, where we have the kind of technology advances we've made in the last five, six, seven decades, think about in the lifespan of a 10-year-old right now, what advances they're going to see. Medical technologies are going to advance so rapidly that we might one day be able to transplant eyes or uh, you know really cure blindness uh, in ways that we can't even imagine now and what my goal is at this point in somebody that has very advanced Coates disease and a total retinal detachment is saving saving their eye keeping their retina attached in the hopes that one day one of these technologies might be helpful for them